so do you remember those days when you were first learning factoring and you're, and you're like, when am I ever gonna use this in my life? And your teacher's like, well, uh, you're gonna, you have to know how to do all this stuff and blah, blah, just do the problems. And, you, and if you're probably like me, you probably gave your students a lot of practice on factoring because when it gets to a time now, uh, your teacher is gonna be kind of expecting you to know how to factor at a kind of reasonably efficient method. And that, I think that's a lot of the stumbling blocks for students when they come into the pre-calculus classes. They, they don't really have that great foundation of factoring because you know, they wanna understand and reason with everything, which, I, which is important for a lot of mathematics, but there's also kind of a lot of bare skills that students need to bring with them. So therefore, we can do a problem like this and actually you know, understand why we're gonna do problems like this and even further mathematics. So initially what I have here is I'm looking at a problem and, I, and there's nothing I can see to represent this. This is not a Pythagorean identity up top um, and this is really nothing there on the bottom as well. So I can't kind of just transform this what I've previously done in other videos. However, I want to see in, uh, I want to see is there any way I can rewrite this by kind of maybe using factoring. All right, so let's kind of let's work on some easier numbers first of all to kind of see how we can rewrite it. So if I had x squared minus 4. Let's forget about trigonometry, uh, trigonometry, trigonometry for a second real quick. And let's say I had x squared minus 4. Now if you did a lot, a lot of factoring practice, hopefully you should rec recognize this is what we call a difference of two squares. I, if I was going to factor, uh, factor x squared minus 4, I can simply rewrite this as x minus 2 times x plus 2. All right. Now using that thinking, what I can do is I can look at this and say, this is the same thing. This is cosine of x squared and then minus 2 squared, right? Where you kind of, let's kind of look at what the difference of 2 squared says. a squared minus b squared means you have a minus b times a plus b. So what I want to do is can I rewrite this as the cosine squared of x, which it is, and then uh, and this is a square number, which would be 2 squared. That means my a in this problem is cosine of x, and my b in this problem is going to be 2. Because 2 squared gives me 4, and cosine squared gives me cosine squared of x. So therefore, up top, I can rewrite this as cosine squared of x minus 2 times cosine squared of x plus 2. So I, now I rewrote that on the top, and then on the bottom, I'm still going to have my denominator, which is cosine of x minus 2. Now I'm going to put these in the parentheses so that you can see that these two terms, these two binomials, are exactly the same. So just like if I was going to you know, have 3 times 4 divided by 3, since my 3's are going to divide out to 1, just leave me with 4, with binomials it's the same thing. These are exactly the same, so therefore they're going to divide out into 1. right? These two terms divide to 1, just leaving me with cosine squared of x plus 2. Now this is very close to a Pythagorean identity, but it's not, so therefore I'm just going to leave that as my um, final answer. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you simplify a rational trigonometric expression. Thanks.